Howdy, April Pregal. It is Ms. Kosh, and these are Mr. Passwater's notes on um, topic 112, uh, transformations of functions. Um, so going through the different types, we have a vertical transformation, so it's f of x plus k, where it's going to shift us as a vertical translation. They like to use that word translation um, of k units. And then we have, if it's in with this value, um, so it's f of x plus h in the parentheses, then it's going to shift us negative x, h. Did I say the wrong thing a second ago? Anyway, it's going to shift us negative h units. So, um, so for this one, this one, this took our graph, it's f of x plus 2, became this g graph right over here. So it shifted this original graph over two units to the left. This one was minus 2, it went down 2. Okay, um, and then we have a vertical dilation. Um, F has a vertical dilation by a factor of the absolute value of A units. Um, and so here, if I have a negative, and then it, if it's less than zero, then it's reflected over the x-axis. This was a negative 2 times F of x, and I can take each y value and multiply it by negative 2, or I could think of I'm stretching and reflecting at the same time. Well, let's dilating by a factor of 2. I'm trying to not use stretch and compress this year. But it's too many years of teaching the other. Okay. On this one, um, the horizontal dilation, um, F of BX, has a horizontal dilation by a factor of the absolute value of 1 over B units. So, um, it's, yeah, that's what happens here. So if we take this one and we have a negative X, the F of negative X just reflects us over the Y axis. Um, okay. Let's see. Any transformations that affect the value, the x values will in, uh, occur inside. Any that affect the uh, x values do the opposite of what it looks like to the x. Okay, so if you have something like um, minus 3 right here, it's actually going to move it in the positive 3 direction. Um, okay, any transformations that affect the y value, values occur outside the parentheses. Okay, this is good. And any transformations that affect the y values do exactly what it looks like to the y values. Okay, so let g be a function that is a transformation of the function f such that g is equal to that. Describe the transformation. Okay, so this is a vertical dilation by a factor of 2. And then it went to the right, 3, and up 1. So maybe we should say it's translated right 3 and up 1. Okay. There's more! Okay, so looking at this one, let n be a function that is a, the transformation of the function m. I think this is, oh, oh, this, he, he does his graphs above the, the directions, but I don't think in those terms, so I'm like looking at this, expecting it to be, but it's not related. Here we go. Um, let n be a function of, that is a transformation of the function m such that n of x is equal to negative 4m2x. Describe the transformations in the function that result in the, okay. So we have this negative, can you see? It's kind of small type. Um, all right. This negative gives us a reflection over the um, x-axis. So it's reflected over the x-axis. It's a vertical dilation by a factor, a factor of 4. And it's a horizontal dilation by a factor, my handwriting is getting worse and worse, of one half. Okay, and so with some of these, um, there is a way to relate the horizontal dilations and the vertical dilations, but it entirely depends upon what parent function we're working with. Okay, um, so like I can't just say, like if my parent function f of x is equal to x squared, there's a big difference between 2 f of x and f of 2x. Okay, this one ultimately becomes 2 times f of x, and there you go. This one becomes 2x squared, which gives you 4 times f right there. Um, and so we can't, we can't, we can find a way to relate one to the other, like the vertical dilations and the horizontal dilations, um, but don't overcomplicate your life, and it totally depends on what the parent function is. Had this become, had this been to the fourth power, if I change that to a fourth power, then then this is still just um, that. And now 2 to the fourth is 2, 4, 8, 16. This is 16 x to the fourth when I raise that to the fourth power. Okay, so anyway, point being, the parent function matters. Okay, let's look at the next one. 
The graph consists of two line segments and a semicircle. I've been having fun creating graphs with semicircles. So there we go. Um, okay, and it goes from negative three to five. Sketch the graph on the same axis where, okay, so this is gonna shift us to the left three and down four. So left three goes here, one, two, three, down one, two, three, four. I can go from here, go left three, one, two, three, down one, two, three, four. Um, this goes left, one, two, three, down one, two, three. There's got to be a better way. What am I doing? Um, and then this was two units long, so that's two units long. Okay, and this went up, above, oh, pretend I can draw. Okay, uh, or what I could do is I could say, um, well, I know at f of, this is f of negative three, um, if I want f of negative 3, but I'm adding 3 to it, I'd have to say g of negative 6 would be equal to f of um, negative 6 plus 3 um, minus 4. This becomes f of negative 3 minus 4. f of negative 3 was this 3 minus 4 gave me a negative 1. And sure enough, this is now the point here, g of um, negative 6 equals negative 1. And that corresponds. But I didn't think of it that way. I, well, I was just having fun drawing it. Okay. Um, the next one here, let's see, has a hole at x equals 4. There's the hole. And consists of three line segments. Sketch a graph where it's, um, oh, so this one. We have a reflection over the x-axis. And everything is horizontally dilated by a factor of 1 half. So what had been at 4 now comes to 2. But it got reflected and shifted up one. So this would be, okay, so let's see. Um, uh, let's do k of, well, this is at negative 4, so 2 times um, negative 2. So k of negative 2 will be equal to a negative h of 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Okay, and so this is a negative, um, h of negative 4 was negative 3, so a negative negative 3 plus one, this became a positive three plus one is four. Okay, so another way to think about this, or if I just try and um, brute force my way through it, I needed, I had a dilation by a factor of one half, so half of negative four is negative two. I reflected it, so then I came up to positive three, and then I went up one and I got to positive four. And so this would be that point. This point has now become that point. Um, okay, this point was at negative two, so that's not gonna go to negative one for the x value. I'm going to reflect it down and then go up one and that's at zero. So we're going to be here. Then this point, did I do that right? Okay, let's, let's double check. Eight, K of negative one should be equal to negative H of two times negative one plus one. Two times negative one is H of negative two. That was equal to one. Negative one plus one is sure enough it's zero. Okay, I was right. Um, and this one, um, half of zero is um half of zero is still zero and then i need to um, reflect this so it goes up to positive two and then um, and then shift it up one so it goes to three so we are doing something like this oh, okay um let me make sure let's see so k i just said k of zero would be equal to negative h of two times zero plus one, h of zero is equal to negative two. So negative negative two is a positive um, two plus one is three. And yes, I'm, uh, notice how I like to use these to make myself feel better. Um, okay, so I've moved this point. Let's look at this one over here. This is at six. So k of three will be equal to negative h of two times three plus one. Negative h of six, h of six was at positive four, so negative four plus one is negative three, so negative three is down here, but we're at, oh, not six, we're at three. So we're at three, negative three. And then we have a hole that we need to consider. Okay, the hole is no longer at, um, well, we have the place where the empty hole is, and then we have the value where it's filled in. Okay, um, and so we need to, this will be at two, and then we've reflected it, um, well, we can see, too, that it's on this line um, when I connect these guys. Um, okay, let me try this again. So this positive 2 goes to negative 2. Add 1, it goes to negative 1. And so here is that hole. And is that on that same line? Over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1? No. 
Oh, 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 I was, I should have been at two. I'm sorry. Um, that's the wrong. Okay. Cause I was half of four is two. Um, and so then this is over one, two, down one, two, three, four. Oh yeah. Uh, am I on the same line? Should have a nice same slope. One, two, three, down one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Are y'all catching my mistake? This slope was initially one. When I pull things in, it becomes a slope of two, but then I made it negative. Over one, down one, two. Over one, down one, two. Over one, down one, two. Oh, I'm fine. Sorry, you guys. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Good, but not perfect. Okay. Here's that. And then this point right here would now be at x equals two. So we have um, k of 2 would now equal negative h of 2 times 2 plus 1. That was at um, a negative k, h of 4 was equal to negative 1 plus 1. That's positive 1 plus 1 is 2. And so the filled in value is going to be at 2, 2. Because it had to shift up. Okay. I think that's right. That was kind of gross. Uh, okay. Uh, everything, I think we're fine. If, if you caught a mistake, let me know. Um, and let's see, he has this much more. One, two, three. I, I'll come back for the next video. So like, subscribe, comment, um, and I will see you in the next video.